So what formation are you going for then, Paul? Well, I'm going to keep it old school. I'm going to go for the straightforward 4-4-2. Who have you gone for in goal then? So in my time, there was um, Woody and Oli Gottskalsen. He was an Icelandic powerhouse. He, he really was. He scared the living daylights out of me. Um, certainly wasn't scared to, to tell you how he felt and, and absolutely wipe out 10 players to, to clear a ball. His passion and desire for the game was, was, was fantastic. And, you know, great shot stopper. Um, six foot three, you know, filled the goal out. And, you know, it, there wasn't much that he couldn't do. I remember one, one half time, Gavin Mann and Ollie having our right set to. And uh, I think Wally Downs got in the middle of them at that time. So I would have liked to see who was going to win on that one. Who do you think would have won? I think, I, I think Gav. Mm. I think Gav, yeah, he's got massive arms, Gav. Just <laughs> Who have you gone for as your right back, should we say? Uh, there was a um, there was a few choices. I had uh, Danny Boxall, who when I joined the club was injured, but I played against Danny, um, and he was a, a unbelievable player, really really strong, very quick, horribly good looking. And then there was Dobbo again, one of those lads that was a younger lad when I joined. I, I loved his passion, the way Ray Lou had the team set up. Um, it fitted perfectly for Dobbo. It, it could bomb forward, excellent delivery, absolutely first class. Okay, so that's your first defender. Let's go for your first centre back. So I'm going to go for the claw, Big Powley, Darren Powell. Claw, I love it. He was the first person I actually walked in that change room. It was quite, it was quite intimidating, and the first person I saw was Darren Powell, and I looked at him and thought, Jesus Christ. Powley on the pitch was was brilliant. Technically not very great, but made up for it again in his willingness and passion and desire to, to, to win and achieve um, mm. and he, he never ever in through training and in any game that I played him I never ever saw him pull out the tackle the claw why his feet they were like he had a size of like 15 feet and his toenails were like the toe. they, were, they were like off like you know a, a big bald eagle toenails they were horrific so yeah, and it was that was it. You, you, the minute he'd walk in the shower, you just see these feet come round the corner, and oh. you just you just get out. It's just they were horrible, awful. Right. All right. Let's quickly move on from that. So who's his partner in the centre of defence? I'm going to go for Eva Ingemarsson. When I first joined Brentford, the story was Eva was playing centre midfield. Everyone when I joined just said, just don't give him the ball. I'm yep. like, what? No, I said he's playing centre mid. They went, he's useless. Don't give him the ball. He started playing in midfield. And I could see why. I could. I was thinking he can't. He's, he can't play with his back to back to the game. He can't. He can't. Can't do it. And then Ray Lou shoved him in at centre half. Wow, what a difference! <laughs> Different player. He was unstoppable. Again, another Icelandic, quiet, quiet lad, built like a brick ton house. The way he could read a game defensively, he wasn't lightning quick, but he was very, very strong and could read a game brilliantly. You know, in the space of two or three years being going from somebody like, don't give him the ball to playing in the Premiership, um, he's done all right. Just quickly then on Powell and Inga Marsen together, how great a partnership were they? Brilliant. I, you know, I think any centre forward coming up against them two would have thought, I'm in trouble today. And because they had everything, you had Powley that would kick the living daylights out of you. And then you had Eva who was technically brilliant. Okay, should we move on to your, to your left back? I think I know who you're going to go for, but I have to say, and we have to put this out there, because when I was talking to you about this, you were like, am I allowed to put myself in? I think you're the only person that's ever asked if they could put yourself in this team. If, if I was as good as I did defensively, he's got no chance of beating me. Because right. going forward, I, had, I was all over him. He, he couldn't, he was great going forward, but he couldn't deliver. His left foot was average, you know? And, and that's me being as polite as I can. But defensively, magnificent. I would hate to be a right winger against him because he was, he was small, nasty. He'd, he'd get up in your face. He was, he was horrible to play against and technically very, very good. If we're going for an out and out left back, and I, I think my formation is a left back type thing because I've got someone in front of me that was a lovely good left winger. So I would go, I'll go with Aja. Should we move into your midfield then? Who was your first pick? Oh, so right wing, I've gone for Martin Rowland. <gasps> right. So we, we connected on the pitch. 
Um, I was at left back, he was right wing. I could hit a diag to him and I knew exactly where he'd be. I didn't even need to look up. For a, a football and brain and his ability, I, I, you know, the minute I joined the club, I, I said to him, you'll be in the Premier League. You'll, you'll be top end all day long. I know how he left Brentford and what he did was completely wrong. But as a footballer, I understand it. I don't agree with it. I understand what he's done. Um, but on that pitch, as a right winger, all day long. As it is then, who should we go for the first one that you've got in the middle? Yeah, I'm going to go to his little, his partner, Gavin Mann. So I'd have Gavin Mann right next to him. There's one player that had the respect for absolutely everybody. And I know Paul Evans was captain at that time, but Gav was the leader. He, he had the authority around him. So he's one of them guys, you know, that I, another one of the guys that I hate. That You know when someone walks in a room and everyone goes, wow. <laughs> They yeah. kind of have got that that bubble around them where everyone is drawn to him. And, and Gav is that. You know, you stuck him in the middle of that park and he would dictate, you know. And again, another one, Premiership. And, you know, he did brilliantly in the Premiership. Who's his partner in the middle? This was really hard. Really, really hard. So I've got Paul Evans, lived with me for six months. Right. And then I've got Steve Sidwell. Mm. Okay. I've gone with Siddy, Stevie Sidwell. Okay. I've, I've gone with Siddy because of the impact that he made in such a short space of time at Brentford. Um, Evo was brilliant uh, and a great captain. Really, really great guy. But Sidney came in and changed it. He upped, he upped the tempo. How? How did he change it then? I think it's just his, just his quality. I think because he came in from Arsenal, mm -hmm. um, it got a lot of people, a lot of got us kind of looking around going, oh, he's coming in from Arsenal, he must be good. And then the first couple of ga games, he did okay. And I think then we played Stoke and he belted one in the top corner from about 35, 35 yards out. And he controlled that game and everyone was like, ah, my God. Uh, City came in very understated, very quiet, got on with his business, went home. Mm. You know, and you could see in training that he, he's a, a big thinker, you know, real good thinker in the game. And But yeah, Steve, Steve had all the attributes. And again, you know, not being funny, but you look at his career, where he went. Who completes this midfield four then, Paul? Little Hunty, Stephen Hunt. <laughs> We're travelling together. You know, I used to pick him up um, on the car because his car would break down. I'd have to fix his tyres for him and I'd have to lend him money because he was skin. Um, he even jumped on the... Uh, after a Brentford game, my sister ran me up. I just go, Stephen Hunt stood next to me on a train. Couldn't pay, had no money. Just jumped oh. on the train and was running away from, from the ticket inspector because <laughs> he couldn't pay. Oh you know, so I absolutely loved the lad. I loved his enthusiasm. He was a pocket rocket, he really was. Again though, he went on to have a great career playing in the Premier League. Um, was From what you'd seen in the early sort of stages of his career, did he, were you straight away thinking this guy can make it? Hunt is one of those lads that, that through sheer hard work and determination. I don't think Hunty was technically brilliant. I don't think he had a great left foot, but he had all the energy and passion to take him where he needed to get to. Uh, mm. And I really respected him for that. Okay, so we've got our two banks of four. So who's your top two? Okay. Oh, Lloydie. Of course it's going to be Lloydie. Yeah, Woos. Uh, yeah, do you know what? I think on and off the pitch, I, I, I've met a lot of footballers in my time. And right now, Lloydie has to be the most nicest, loveliest man I have ever met in football. And I'm gutted for Lloyd that he never hit the top. Yeah. Because I think Lloydie could have nailed the Premiership. I really do. And that's one player that I really think should have always played Premiership football. You know, he was a horrible player to play against because he was so dangerous. Mm. You know, in the air, with pace, both feet. Unbelievable first touch. Well, that's Lloyd Woos then. Who's his partner in crime? <sighs> Spike P is going to hate me for this. Oh, this is not good. I know, but I'm, I'm going to go with Big Ben Burgess. Oh, well, Triple B. He made a huge impact when he came and, uh, and signed for us. Um, again, not the most mobile, but it didn't need to be, said Lloyd. He would think exactly, his mind and his brain worked as quick as Hunty's yeah. legs. I, I, he's a very thoughtful footballer, yeah. you know, he wouldn't just do anything off the cuff. Everything that he'd do, and you could see that he was thinking way before he'd got the ball. But uh, what was it about 
Burgess and Awusu that worked so well. I think they had 40 goals between them in that 2002 yeah. season. How, yeah. how, how did they work so well together? And do you think they were perhaps, were they the most dangerous partnership in the league that year? I, I think so. I, I think so. I guess it's the old, you know, um, little and large show. I, I guess, albeit both of them were six plus. Yeah. Um, you'd have one that would, would stay and then you'd have one that would, would always be stretching them. So defenders didn't quite know how to play it. They didn't want to drop off with Ben, because Ben was good at his feet. They didn't want to be pulled out of the way, because the minute they got pulled out of the way, <coughs> me, Dobbo, or, or Gav or any had the ability to drop the ball over their heads for Lordy to run onto. Yeah. So it was all about creating space, and that's why they were so difficult as a pair to mark, and they were brilliant at finding space. Hmm. And uh, we always ask your manager, so who would be your boss for this team? Steve Cops. I might know. Yeah. yeah, Steve Cops. Cops had that brilliant ability to drag out every single percent that everyone had. You know, and, you know, technically I wasn't great, but he made me feel a million dollars. He really did. I can imagine. A very sociable group that you yeah. all were. And what about that connection with the fans for you? How important was that? Biggest thing for me. Um, I think, again, I, two clubs, I, I, I had that at Brentford and I had that at Torquay. Um, my, my connection with probably Brentford way surpasses my connection with Torquay. I love Torquay because I had one season now I had longer, but the, the footprint that I have with Brentford is just, it's constant. I mean, it, it, I, I can't believe it's 20 years ago that I first joined. Oh, and, nice. and even now the Brentford fans that still contact me on Facebook and you know and, and I was there uh, two or three times last season and every one of them still they stop me my kids are like Jesus Christ dad you know <laughs> I'm, oh. I'm, I'm sorry they're like oh you love this don't you I said yeah I do <laughs> I do because you think after all these years I, the Brentford fans never forget you yeah. know and Again, you know, I didn't. I wasn't there long. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't score millions of goals, and you know, I didn't do anything fancy, but I gave it my all, and you know, and I think the Brentford fans appreciated that, and I wanted to give my all for the Brentford fans because they deserve that. So it is. I'm. I get goosebumps now thinking about it, thinking, oh my god, they could be in the prem, <laughs> you know, and, and how excited I am for the likes of Pete Gillam, mm. people that have been there pretty much since they were in nappies, I guess. So to have that opportunity for Pete to be calling out Brentford Football Club in a new stadium in the Premiership, it's literally, again, honestly, I'm, go I'm going goosey thinking about it. You know, it's, it's just, I never thought I'd think like that as a for a football club, but I now know what it's like to be a football fan.